Hi, everyone. Let me just adjust that. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Ava. I'm from London. I'm a student, and I am the founder of ArtXV, which is the first NFT collective and the first Web3 community for neurodivergent artists. Neurodivergence is any disability or condition which involves brain function that differs from the norm, so autism, ADHD, bipolar disorder, and plenty of others. So when we talk about diversity and inclusion in Web3, we often, almost always, talk about women. And while this group is incredibly important to support as they enter the space, and whilst we still have quite a long way to go, there does now exist quite a few DAOs NFT communities and community and um, yeah, NFT collectives and communities which do serve this group of people. However, there is one group of people which there is no Web3 community to serve them or support them as they enter and as they want to enter the Web3 space. And this community is the largest minority in the entire world. The disabled community. The disabled community is the largest minority in the entire world. The name RXV, RXV are the Roman numerals for 15, which represents 15% of the world which identifies as disabled. That's over 1 billion people who do not have a support system or do not have an entryway to Web3. And this community really, truly does want to enter Web3. So how did RXV start? It comes from a very personal story. This is my big sister, Tara. Tara is autistic. And she creates these really powerful, colorful pieces of work. So I'll give a bit of story um, about, our, about Tara because RXV is centered all around storytelling. Tara is nonverbal. Tara has not said a single word since she was born and she's now a 31-year-old lady. But no one in this room can't tell me that can tell me that this work is not her communication, is not her form of expression or emotion. And to me, that is the power of art, and that is the power of art XB. So something a bit new, I'm gonna call on some uh, audience members to answer this as well. We have Leonardo da Vinci, Andy Warhol, and Picasso. Apart from being great artists, iconic, can anyone here guess what the three of these people have in common? Yes, perfect, <laughs> got it. <laughs> I, kind of, I kind of guided you to that, didn't I? Yes, uh, Leonardo da Vinci and Picasso were described as reading blind, which is now known as dyslexia, and Andy Warhol was thought to be autistic. And I have zero doubt that their neurodivergence massively contributed to their artistic ability. Imagine having a brain function that differs from the majority of the world, not just that, but having a completely unique lens of the world. That is not just priceless, that is irreplaceable. Can I just take this off? Can I take it off? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you mine uh, one moment so you can take this down, you can walk That's around. Every, uh, hold on, in fact, we have a special mic just for you. Here you go, please. I can feel myself sinking with the microphone. <laughs> so, having, leading on from that, this is our artist, 20 neurodivergent artists and a waiting list. This is a few of their works. I have zero doubt that these artists have the full potential to be the next Leonardo da Vinci's, the next Picasso's, and the next Andy Warhol's. They just need the resources and the opportunities to get there. So you might be thinking, well, what barriers exist for neurodivergent artists? You know, what problems could they possibly come across? And I would love to leave this here. If you leave with anything today, I would love for it to be this. And it's the social model of disability. So, when we think of disability, we think of this man in a wheelchair, he can't go up the stairs, and we think about the medical model of disability often. Okay, his legs, he's impaired, they don't work for any reason, he can't go up the stairs, that is an issue with him. That is a disadvantage that he has. But I would love to introduce to those who don't know already the social model of disability, which is no, there's nothing wrong with him. He has a difference, a diversity, like every single person in this room does, but our society has not been built for people like him. It has been built for people like me, who can climb the stairs. So I would love for all of you to take home that social model of disability. And that leads me on to this, the art world. There are so many barriers in the traditional art world. There are organizational barriers, this elite circle of um, people in the art world that is really hard to break into. Physical barriers. You can't get to many art galleries if you're in a wheelchair. 
And then attitude barriers, something that every single one of our artists have experienced, and something that I experienced myself when I represented my sister, is that the traditional art world does not take disabled artists seriously. And something that makes me laugh often is when I tell people I've got a bunch of neurodivergent artists, they think I'm going to show them squiggles and little stick drawings, and they're blown away by what they've actually produced. So, I've had this experience. I've been told plenty of no's. Where did I come to? Web3 and NFTs. I've said about all those barriers that people face. Physical barriers, societal barriers, attitude barriers. But imagine having culture, art, community, and income all at your doorstep, all at your computer screen. Web3 is going to be absolutely enormous for the disabled community, and I think in ways which most people don't appreciate. It's going to be absolutely revolutionary. And then what's more with attitude, all of you, you are all part of the Web3 community. You are open to change. You are progressive. You are modern. You embrace change and stray away from old archaic systems that just don't work. So I really believe that the Web3 community is not just going to look past neurodivergent artists, but it's going to embrace their neurodivergence. So a bit about our community. We have 20 neurodivergent artists all around the world, all different ages, a super diverse bunch. Um, but I want to say this. I don't want this to just be a community for neurodivergent people or disabled people. I want it to be a community for all of us, every single one here. This is something for anyone that enjoys art, anyone that enjoys storytelling, anyone that enjoys social impact. And I say this because there is a segregation between disabled and non-disabled people. There is apprehension when it comes to disabled community. And I want to show this stat, because it's a really important. And it's uncomfortable, I know, but it's reality. Two thirds of people feel awkward around disability. I would love the Web3 community to be the champions who spearhead this movement and who listen to these artists, their stories, and see that, you know what, they're not so different to us. We're all different, we all have, have diversities, but that's what makes the world go round. And then what's more, I have to say, we get a lot of junk when it comes to NFT collectives. When I first tell people I run an NFT collective, they roll their eyes. Um, <laughs> but this is a very authentic project, really authentic stories, painstakingly made art, a beautiful, vibrant community, and really just founded by two sisters, me and Tara, who have a real deep love for the neurodivergent community. So just a little bit about our team, founded by me and Tara, um, but I do most of the work behind the scenes. We also have John, who is um, one of the CTOs at Google, and who is neurodivergent himself. So he has that lived experience of going through the corporate world as someone who is neurodivergent. And this project is particularly close to his heart. We have Justin, who has been there with me since day one. He is the dean at the Awesome Foundation, who supports projects like ours, and who gave me my first ever grant when I first started. And the lovely Liana, who works for Leyline, which um, reward people for doing good deeds with NFTs. So where is RxV going? Where are we taking the disabled community? Um, we have partnered with Google Arts and Culture, the first NFT collective to do so. We will have a project on their platform and this is your chance to hear from the artists themselves. Disa people often speak on behalf of disabled people. I want them to speak for themselves. This will be them, their words, their stories, their art, what makes them tick, how their neurodivergent impacts their work in a positive way. It's all celebratory. We will have our first drop on Coinbase's NFT platform, which will be launching soon. And we have recently partnered with Mencap, which is the UK's largest disability charity, and I'm so proud of Tara for being their latest ambassador as of yesterday. So if you head to their website, you can check out a little a cute video of us too. And um, as of yesterday, we are now enrolled in Metapod's, um, Metapod's Accelerator program, supported by Meta Cartel. So I'm extremely excited about that. So I've gone on about RxB, but RxV is centered around storytelling. So I want to introduce you to a few of the artists so you really get a feel of the collective and a feel for neurodivergence. So here we have Jay Quinn. He was one of the first artists. He is an artist from Nashville and his neurodivergence is synesthesia. Now synesthesia is a neurodivergence where you, one piece of information, um, which is meant to simulate one sense, simulates many. What does this mean for art? This means when he hears music, he directly sees color. I mean, I can't get over how incredible that is for the art world. So if you look at his NFTs, 
Anyone who purchases his NFTs or owns his NFTs has to listen to the song that he listened to when he created this, because this is a direct path from the mind to, the, to his fingers, to creating this. And they are truly, truly incredible. Next, we have Amanda. She's an autistic artist from New York City. Just like many of us, she really struggled during the pandemic. Her mental health really suffered. And she has documented that through the lens of an autistic artist and created really powerful, sometimes often uncomfortable, but really intense and beautiful pieces. Now we have Philip. Philip is one of our latest artists. He has ADHD, he's ex-military, so he's been all over the world. He currently lives in Texas. And all of his pieces are surround, uh, centered around his experience with ADHD and through the lens of ADHD. And he makes these amazing, amazing trippy pieces. And Philip says that this is what's going through his mind, really. is completely, again, mind to paper or mind to screen. And I will end it on Caleb. Caleb's story to me is particularly special. Uh, Caleb is an artist from England. He was diagnosed quite later on in his 30s with autism. And he never thought he could do art or was artistic. But he creates these pieces. I mean, these are absolutely incredible. He would literally just, would just doodle out of, you know, to help his anxiety and he would create this. Now, something that's really special about Caleb that he confided in uh, with me is that prior to RxV, for 17 years, he had never spoken to anyone besides his family and one close friend. A few weeks ago, with the CTO of Google, John, we had our first group meeting. 20 neurodivergent artists, one, um, one John, and we all spoke, and I really, I really begged him to come. I said, look, turn off your microphone, Turn off your webcam. Just be there. Just be present and listen. You know, I have zero expectations. Halfway through the call, for the first time, he turned on his webcam. He turned on his microphone. And he engaged with the entire community. He asked John. And John's, you know, he's a lovely guy. But it's intimidating, CTO of Google. He spoke to him. He asked questions. He chatted. He joked with the entire group. And to me, that's what RxV is all about. Thank you. And oh, I was just going to say, if you want to check amazing. us out, there's our Discord to join the community, Google Arts and Culture Project, 1st of March, Coinbase project, drop yeah. on Coinbase coming soon.